So what can we do to prototype a Rube Goldberg machine in Unity? Well, here's a few thoughts or examples of things that you might want to try out and follow along with. One thing that I've done in my project after the last video was create this prefabs folder to create some prefabs from my objects. The most important ones might be my ramp, my ball, and my finish platform because I might want multiple different versions of these in my game at different times. For example, what if I selected by dragging across and holding shift and clicking on, although it's not letting me here. Oh, it's, holding, it's clicking my canvas when I do so. Holding shift and clicking both of these objects and raising these up above that lower platform. And of course I deselected it again, above this lower platform. What if I took my another ramp and dropped it in my world here and moved it over and tried to line it up nicely with this. Now it's a little bit hard to line up perfectly just by kind of dragging it around. So sometimes the better way than using a prefab is to just copy and paste the ramp that's already in the world. So I can go control C, control V, and now I have another ramp that I can just move around and put underneath. However, I want this to be facing the opposite direction. So I can consider rotating it in different dimensions. Now we want to do the Y axis for this particular rotation. I can do a 180 rotation. And now I have this facing the opposite direction. Copy and paste. And now move another copy down just below here. And now I have a slightly more interesting experience to have my user kind of view and witness. This idea of kind of moving between the different panels before it lands, hopefully I've lined it up okay, on this platform below. Okay, so we can consider having these, and of course you can consider having all sorts of different like rotations that are more or less steep. You can have different sizes by using our scaling in different ways. You could even have it rotate on its side a little bit so that it kind of dumps it itself off a little bit further over in a bit more of an interesting manner. So it's not just all such, such straight typical movements. Of course, if they do some play testing, to make sure that it doesn't break because I'm a little bit worried it's going to miss, which it did. So I have to customize this machine to work a little bit more properly. Maybe in this case, I want to shift it over here a little bit, maybe change the angle up and, and over a little bit like so. So that now when I run this, it's actually going to hit the right spot and be a little bit more of an interesting experience as it goes down along these different platforms. And I think I'm going to miss here. Yeah, that's all right. Trial and error will have to be involved in some of these things. But what if I wanted to do something maybe a little bit more elaborate, where instead of just having falling sections all the time, which I can create lots of different combinations of, what if there was a section where I had it not be really rotated at all? Instead, I had a straight platform that was flat, where I could do something maybe a little bit more interesting with physics that could have some interesting results in this system. So right now the ball just rolls across, but what if I were to do something like take a new sphere. Actually, let's make it a cube here. That makes more sense. Let's take a new cube and place it on this platform here. I'm going to shrink this down to be kind of a narrow, tall, almost like a domino that's going to kind of be slightly in the way of my path here. And I could design this to just kind of be an object that needs to be knocked out of the way. And here's where we're going to have to be considering something like uh, the actual mass of the object that we're creating. And I definitely want kind of a bit of a different effect here because right now, see that ball bounced off it, which might be what you want. You might want it to bounce off and go somewhere else. But what if, and now actually under my materials, let's just do this. Um, let's create a new material because it's kind of hard to see these things. A material for a wall. And let's just give it a unique color. What's the color we don't have in here so far? Let's go with pink of some kind. Give my wall this color. What if I made my ball have a significantly higher level of mass? And this wall's mass, um, well, right now it doesn't even have it because I don't have a rigid body. So let's put a rigid body on this and let's leave the mass at one so that it is significantly lighter than this ball, which should result in when the ball hits it, it getting knocked over to the side. So we can consider having something that just might be a kind of a cool effect to have pop out in our project here, rather than it really affecting the movement of the ball. It's just kind of like dominoes that we're knocking off as kind of the cool factor of something that we're creating. So the ball's going to come through and plow those over. And of course, 
it got nudged to the side, so I'd have to line them up in a way that's clever to kind of knock them off. Maybe I want them all to be a bit closer to the edge and on either side of where the ball's traveling. So I could think about grouping these all kind of tightly here and copying all four of them. And here, maybe I want to rotate this as a whole unit like so and move them all oops, back over kind of lined up a little bit to the side here as kind of a cool little pathway. Um, let's just click on all of these together and just kind of position them, not up, but a little bit more so that they look a little more symmetrical. And now I might have this kind of cool cascading knockdown effect as my ball travels with the center of them. Maybe need to, oh, it could be centered a little bit better, but you just kind of see what I'm going for here, this kind of destruction derby effect of, of layering some things to run into, which could be kind of cool. I could even consider something like, why don't I just take uh, this chunk of stuff right now and I'm going to disable all of them so that they're kind of out of the way. And here's a little tip for you in development. I'm going to create an empty game object. I'm going to call this the uh, gauntlet of dominoes. And I'm going to move all these cubes inside of it so that this gauntlet of dominoes, if I have them all enabled, if I just take the parent or the main organizational category and disable it, everything else inside of it disappears. This also means I can copy this and paste it. Oh, copy this and paste it. I have another gauntlet of dominoes that I can now, well, maybe not put somewhere else, just put behind it. So now I've kind of duplicated this whole set of stuff. And so it's a nice way of being quick with how you work with things. I'm just gonna disable these for now. What if I wanted to create a scenario where instead of knocking things over, um, I was able to kind of influence something else being affected in my scene. So I'm going to create a cube that I'm going to place right here. And I'm going to shrink this guy down a little bit. Um, actually, I'm going to make him a little bit taller, a little bit wider, but kind of narrow. And this should be nice and flush. Oops, I want to select this one with the platform here. So let's kind of zoom in and kind of get it as close as I can realistically. I'm not too concerned about being perfect at this point. And what I want to do with this is create another cube that I lift up and put top of here. And I'm going to stretch this one um, horizontally. And I'm going to squish this down and make it really, really long so that it's something of a platform that might be um, positioned, let's see what the angle is here, a little bit like this. And what I might do is place something like another game object. Let's create one more cube, just because cubes are useful in this type of experience. That could go right about here. And I'm just gonna put a, uh, a texture on this like so, and I'm gonna put a, let's just put a red on it just so we can see this distinctly. And I'm going to have both of these have a rigid body, which means they're both going to be affected by physics and have mass. And so the idea here is that this platform will rotate around this little lip with this box pressing down on it. Let's just kind of see if I've done this well. I'm going to press tab right away to get my view here. And uh, let's go up and bam, you can see that I've now launched that cube by hitting it. Let's, let's take a look at this one more time and reset it. I'll hit tab right away and try to get my camera in the right perspective here. As the ball comes down, it clips the edge and flips it up and over and flings this cube. And now the cube is kind of a moving part of the scene and that ball continues on its way. So, okay, there's something, I can think of a lot of ideas off the top of my head about what that interaction could potentially create. Maybe this flings into some other obstacles that it knocks over, or maybe it, uh, it becomes a part of the way that you unlock the pathway to the exit. So something for you to consider there as well. Um, let's just take that and put this all into its own empty that I'm gonna call the fling thing for now and put these all inside of it and disable this so that it's hidden away. Okay, what are some other things that we could have going on here? Well, what if I took another cube and I moved it up and I thought about making kind of a pseudo wall. So let's just take this and stretch it out 
and make a bit of a wall. I'm going to copy and paste it and make another wall. Copy and paste it, and I'm going to rotate this. Uh, I guess we want to rotate it 90 degrees in this case here. And I'm going to make a bit of a dead end for this experience right now. Maybe shrink this down a little bit um, so that it's a bit of a box that the ball can get trapped in if, if it just was to go in there directly. But what if there was a way for me to trigger somewhere uh, else in this map? Let me just select both of these things and move them up a little ways and back a little ways. What if I had another platform like this one that has a bunch of small balls in it? Uh, let's get some spheres. And each of these having a rigid body. I'm just thinking about the size of this ball and the size of this. Maybe I want to kind of narrow this in a little bit. But I want this to have to get filled up with things so that my ball doesn't just drop in and get stuck. It has something to like roll over top of. So what if I had a bunch of these that were just rigid bodied balls that were all able to roll into that lower platform? Because the platform that they're on Let's just uh, snag this and move this over. Let's rotate it this way. So I'm creating a little bit of a kind of a, a lip meeting point here where all of these things can kind of roll into. And if I was to, oh, now this isn't going to look the most elegant. I have to take some more time to kind of figure this out. But uh, they kind of have a slope. This has a slope to it so that these balls are all able to rotate or roll, sorry, into that lower section. Maybe they need to get kind of knocked into it. So all those balls kind of get funneled down into this little channel. Oh, I messed the camera controls up. And uh, wow, I need to change those speeds a little bit. That'll be something you can mess with when you are prototyping for yourself. Let's get this up here. So you see how those balls will kind of narrow in and now fill that spot. And potentially this ball could now roll on top of them and get bounced around. Or maybe they just have to block it so that there's enough blocking the space for the ball to kind of get blocked and bounce back out. So you can kind of have little setups like this, containers that things get caught up in. How about one last idea for now? What if I took this idea of having a prefab of my finished platform and this finished platform was maybe almost like a pseudo checkpoint. Maybe I'm trying to, one of the goals of this machine is to actually trigger all of these different platforms uh, so that the entire uh, scene is illuminated by different things. So maybe I actually need for there to be multiple different ones of these that get interacted with over time. So this would be the first one. And then it has a flame effect. Well, what if this first one had a lightning effect? Turn that on and then attach a lightning effect to this. This one down here still has the flame effect. There are different platforms, but each of them will be triggered separately by the ball connecting with them when it when it collides. So let's hop in here and move up and just kind of watch what happens. Those balls have blocked the way. Perfect, so that my ball can now roll down and it triggers this platform. And oh, I see an interesting thing here where the bottom platform was triggered when the top one was connected. How come that's the case here? Well, it's because of the way that the uh, player has been built. So we need to make some changes. So actually what I've done, I paused the recording. Uh, I realized there's a better way I could have written the script to allow that to work. And so what I've done is I've changed it so that we don't need this check finish script anymore. Now each of these platforms is going to allow itself to be triggered on its own. So with the code that I share with you, this actually shouldn't have the same error that you just saw with me kind of a little bit of prototype changes going on here. I could have shown you the code changes, but we're gonna deal with that a little bit later. So now when the ball connects with the first platform, it just triggers that one effect and then a separate effect for the other one. So you could have a whole series of different effects being triggered at different tiers as you move along, kind of just this cool experience. It's not a game, it's just kind of a fun way of playing with physics, getting used to creating different objects and, and getting used to using Unity in different combinations. So explore and experiment with that. I just want to provide you a couple more kind of concept ideas. Consider doing something along the lines of, well, what, how do you set the world? Right now my scene is pretty kind of just like floating stuff in the middle of nowhere. There's kind of 
no rhyme or reason to what's happening, which there doesn't need to be, but it might be cool to set the scene. What if you use the terrain tool to make like a really cool spiry mountain that uh, was kind of epic and in your scene, you had uh, the starting platform of the ball up here. And then as the ball kind of goes down the pathway loops around the mountain with the different obstacles that you put in place, eventually reaching a little channel like a little valley as it continues on its way. And so there's some kind of cool background environments for the player to kind of see and experience as they're going through this kind of experience overall. Or maybe you wanted to you want to make a scene that's kind of like you're high above a beautiful landscape down below. So you have this like landscape with mountains and valleys and whatever other textures you paint down below. Look at my beautiful art. Lots of different kind of features and your your events happening up above it. And as things are happening, you are knocking objects off, which are raining destruction down on whatever it is down below. So it's kind of like, they can almost have a little bit of story going on. Like there's some kind of like, like crazy uh, cataclysmic event happening in the sky that you are causing by your ball rolling. Or maybe you just want to create something in the void of Unity's design space and just worry about creating some cool dynamic mechanics. Up to you to decide what to do. You're the game developer. And this early prototype, as I said before, is really not so much a game as it is a simulation experience for you to showcase how well you're doing at learning these core strategies in Unity. Have fun with it. Try to have the whole experience last something around a minute of time. More is fine. A lot less might be a little bit underdeveloped, but try to have enough content so that it takes about a minute for that ball to roll through the whole system. And I can see a variety of different cool ideas on display in your own custom Rube Goldberg machine.